This Toyota pickup is brought to you by Manscaped. Like I need to explain this to you. I've been doing regular car reviews for eight years. It only took this long for Manscaped to reach out to me. This is the easiest read I've ever had to do because I've already owned these products. Simply go to manscaped.com today and get 20% off plus free international shipping plus two free gifts when you use promo code REGULAR at checkout. The global leader in men's grooming tools and hygiene solutions. Stop trying to use barber shears to clean up your mess. Use the right tool. It comes with its own headlight and it doubles on snare. And accompanies on bass. This is the Platinum Package 4.0. You get body wash, you get shampoo and conditioner. Made with all natural hydrating ingredients, these products are all power, power, free, cruelty free, dry free, and vegan. Seriously though, you do feel a lot better about yourself once you get yourself cleaned up. Imagine taking someone to bed and then they pull down your pants and they go, ugh. No, they got deodorant for that. It's called the Crop Preserver. They don't even mess around. It's literally called ball deodorant. About time someone made that. When you get older, you're gonna need one of these things. You stick this up your nose and it trims the hair. I don't know what you're gonna use more, the lawnmower 4.0 or the nose hair trimmer. Get 20% off plus free international shipping plus two free gifts with promo code REGULAR at manscaped.com. That is promo code REGULAR at manscaped.com. Oh, and check this out, underneath, anti-chafing boxer briefs. Wear these on a plane, that way you don't itch yourself when you get to the arriving airport. That is promo code REGULAR at checkout. I could do all kinds of reads for these all day. Anyway, 89 Toyota pickup. No low ballers, I know what I have. 1989 Toyota pickup SR5 5MT 4x4. No, it's not for sale. Jim, the owner, said that back in Indiana, and every Kroger, Mayor, or however you pronounce that giant style supermarket, wheeling and dealing dads made cash offers right there. No, for real. One dad in a Silverado blocked Jim from leaving Jim's parking space and kept upping his price. And Jim kept turning him down even at $20,000. I'll go to the bank right now and give you $20,000 for this. And Jim was like, no, let me go home. The Toyota pickup. Not for sale. Yep. In America, the Hilux was never given a name. Toyota wasn't sure a light-duty truck bearing their name would be accepted by Rambo-era Yanks, which doesn't make sense because Toyota started selling the N10 Hilux here in 1969. Nice. But no model name until 1995 when the pickup gained its USA name Tacoma. I grew up knowing these trucks as SR5s, even though that's just a trim level. But what else was I supposed to call it? The only thing written on the back of the, you know, on the lift gate was Toyota and SR5. So, okay, this is an SR5 truck. And you want one, don't you? Look at these graphics. Rad. Even when gray on gray. And check out these seats. Jim's dad bought this truck new and kept seat covers on it from day one. Mint! Oh, it's another Toyota. Brian is just going to say nice things about it because he's a T-Boy fanboy. Yeah, you're right. This little truck rules. The 22 RE four-cylinder is happy. Rev it to 3,000 RPM for every shift, no matter what you're doing. And no matter what you're doing, that's what it was made for. Get out to manually lock the hubs. What fun. Drive with pride because I'm, I'm better, better than all of you. you. You want one, don't you? Hang on. There are some issues with these little, cute, manly, adorable, legit, beautiful, aggressive, welcoming, tough, friendly trucks. Number one, rust. Even after selling trucks in the United States for two decades, Toyota still didn't accommodate America's rust belt. The frame and body weren't prepped for winter salt nor was the metal thick enough to surrender a percentage of its mass to oxidation while retaining enough material for structural integrity. Number two, it's slow. It's not dots and pickup slow, but you're never passing anyone in an American Hilux. Okay, power. That's very smooth and uh, second gear, you need like a one and a half gear. Actually, get 
it's straining in second to go up a hill. Yep. Okay, so people say they want these things and they're willing to pay for it. And the answer is, are you sure? You're going, yep, this is just foot on the floor, 53 miles an hour. In the 1980s, it was understood that light duty pickups were built for utility and economy first and speed second. Not like now when a Ford Maverick can cruise at 80 miles an hour. The American Hilux went 55 miles an hour. Ain't, ain't, you want to go 80? You want to go 80 in this? Well, 80 miles an hour is dangerous because number three, this is a bouncy ride. Short wheelbase with poorly dampened springs, which bounce like pogo sticks and a tall center of gravity makes for a really rough and kind of unstable ride. The steering wheel doubles as a handle because the bent seat does nothing for you. And this is from an era where you learned to duck after your front wheels hit a pothole because this truck is about to launch your head right into the roof. Do pickup trucks make sense as a daily driver if you don't need one? Well, yes and no. Uh, yes and that we, I'm still thinking about the Ford Maverick and how that's a perfectly fine car. But we have to think in terms of 1989 because there were any number of options that were far less expensive and way more sense in 1989. But on the other hand, yes, this did make sense as a daily, because if you were into cars at all, if you're a human being in the first place, you knew it wasn't always about making sense. Especially now, in 2022, uh, pickup trucks sell like baby clothes at a flea market. And it's silly to think that absolutely everyone who buys a pickup truck has a practical use for one. The freedom to own a short cab and a long bed without ju justification uh, is written right into our national character. In country music, the only tragedy greater than losing your wife is having to sell your truck. Even a smaller truck like this, with fewer shop floor applications than the bigger models of its day. This still carries with it a day laborer's spirit of blue collar cuts that mark the body like the punctuation of unfinished thoughts where a hard day's work is commemorated by visible injury. And yet, this is different from most American pickup trucks because it's not American. And two, perhaps more importantly, it's a truck that's at its best when you're able to forget it's even a pickup truck at all. 1989 Toyota Pickup Short Bed. If you could make a truck out of a core memory, here you go. The Toyota pickup was every summer that never got started until Jesse's Girl played on the radio at the community pool. A lot of small towns still have remnants from their pre-car times, with back alleys made for horses and hitching posts in front of every business. And in some ways, this is the horse of trucks. Big enough to feel substantial, but not so big that it engulfs small town living. Your four kids can ride in the bed while you wave at neighbors with a leather-skinned arm. The entire tableau proving your disdain for condoms and sunscreen. Or you can accelerate past your small town and onto the highway, where you'll find this to be as confident a cruiser as any pickup truck you'll ever buy in 1989. But you're still going 55, so even if that doesn't bother you, you can't buy this one. Because this is not for sale. And if it were, you'd probably need to be a high roller, dripping in cheese like goofy movie pizza. The original Hilux was introduced in 1968 as a modest truck with quad headlights and a short wheelbase that grew larger into the 70s, along with the engine jumping from 1.5 liters to 2.2, with the addition of a sport-aligned SR5 model hitting the market before the decade was out. The third generation added four-wheel drive, and the fourth generation introduced the fuel-injected 22R-E engine, or, you know, 22RE, the sequel to the legendary 22R, which was introduced in 1981 that boosted Toyota's build reputation for their trucks. Which brings us to this, the fifth generation, a truck that added an optional longer wheelbase and included one-piece cargo box walls that intended to help but not solve rust issues. The 2.4 liter single overhead cam four-cylinder 22RE engine got you electronic fuel injection and a distributor with power ratings hovering around 113 horsepower at 4,600 RPM and 142 foot-pounds of torque at 3,400 RPM. And of course, this is in two-wheel drive high. I don't know how you would calculate it for, you know, four-wheel low. Heck, it's better than the 22R's engine that got you 97 horsepower 
and 129 pound-feet of torque. This engine is matched to a five-speed manual, fifth is overdrive, with the two-speed manual transfer case. And you still have to get out to lock the front uh, hubs because, yeah, you could put it in four-wheel drive, but until you lock those front hubs, it's just the shafts that are spinning. Uh, you're just wasting gas. It also has a big old list of things that I'm just going to copy and paste from the script or whatever document I had open last. Go ahead and pause it and read it. In addition to all that stuff I just pasted, there's also a clutch start cancel, so you can use the starter motor to crawl the truck out of tricky situations if your engine doesn't work, so you don't end up becoming the automotive equivalent of a stepsister stuck in a window. While this offers a 1,400 pound payload capacity, I'm not sure you even want to tow anything with something this small. It's not a builder's truck. It's more fun to drive than your average pickup, because it really isn't expected to do trade things, unless your trade is Finnish carpentry. Gas economy is okay for its day, 19 city, 22 highway. And with 63,797 miles on the odometer, this truck feels a lot younger than it is. And its resiliency has been well documented by Top Gear. I'm sure you've seen it, where they put a Hilux through a comprehensive torture test. They dropped it off a building. They let it sit in the sea. Jeremy Clarkson set it on fire. And using basic tools, was still able to get the burned out body working again, just like Emperor Palpatine. It's 1989, and the Reagan years are ending. Along with the idea that America won't be as good again. American exceptionalism had gone to seed, and nowhere was that better emphasized than through the gradual rise of a gray import that would go on to become a hemorrhoid inside the rectal cavity of the beacon on a hill narrative. That America is an example to the world, and our lap hog hangs lower because it's fat with liberty and self-reliance. The absolute girth of our freedom blocks out the sun whenever we whip it out, creating an eclipse that blinds anyone who dares give us the side eye to our virtue. But American exceptionalism is just the poli-sci version of a not-like-other-girls argument. We make pickup trucks while other countries make tiny compacts and compact sedans with the steering wheel on the wrong side. They measure in imperial units of measure and call toilet paper loo roll. No, I'm from Delaware. I'm not going to get my prostate checked because I'm scared I might like it. The farther we get into the weeds of that sort of argument, the more we end up sounding like a teenager complaining about the popular girl who doesn't dress plain like us. We basically become a Taylor Swift song. It can be hard to uncouple the pickup truck from patriotic signifiers, even the small ones, with tinnier wheels and shorter beds, calling to mind someone who argues that Tom Brady deserves every red cent he makes, even as he decimates their team. Well, if we deserve to win, we woulda. Maybe it's always been this way. Like a story that keeps being newly shaped in each retelling by an old man's malleable memory and his multiple choice past, painting over the psychic wounds of a squandered adulthood, filling silences with a conversation that's all journey and no destination. As he plays all the hits from his brain's copy of Now That's What I Call Conversation Volume 7. Maybe there's no other way for pickup trucks to be contextualized. Even when it's made by a foreign automaker, a pickup truck is still inherently American in a way no other car can truly be. Yet I think that even the most loyal Detroit diesel dad would have a hard time hating on this. A report published by Forbes in January revealed that light trucks are outselling passenger cars 3 to 1, with light trucks accounting for 57.2% of all U.S. vehicles on the road at the end of the third quarter in 2021. In addition, to the big American companies, Toyota's light truck sales increased to 68%, while light trucks accounted for 63% of Honda sales and 59% of Nissan North American sales, according to a report by Motor Intelligence. Yes, pickup trucks are part of the cliché of American excess, but the idea that a truck has to bleed red, white, and blue doesn't seem to be the case anymore. Nor does it seem like a pickup truck is defined by the mental image of a diesel-swallowing monstrosity driven by a tobacco-chewing fly fisher who owns a rifle named Thoughts and a Rottweiler named Prayers. Pickup trucks don't have to mean anything anymore. Give it a few more years and it might not even have to mean American either. It just can be a vehicle like any other, coded by whatever the owner brings to it free from preconceived notions, at last, a citizen of the world. And classic Toyota trucks are to my generation in 2022 
what GM C10 trucks were to baby boomers back in 2002. Nostalgia-hyped machines resold and reimagined for work-horny, image-conscious Carhartt posers. In 2022, the type of people who can outbid everybody else on cars and bids or bring a trailer for one of these things, they're not going to use it for truck stuff. They're going to park center stage in front of whichever Sheets or Wawa has the least amount of fistfights. Hoagie in hand, our protagonist goes through a pantomime of just getting off work opening and closing doors and checking the contents of a clean, empty box in a bed, organizing receipts for expenses that don't exist. Our hero expressively sighs from a workday that never was and places those receipts into a blank folder for a company that isn't. But you still want one, don't you? As do I. The original Toyota pickup is heroically useful. Narrow enough for these East Coast towns, places where their cars were never meant to be. They can, they can go down, these little trucks can go down back alleys and you don't, anybody with like a full-size truck knows that black back alleys are just anxiety-ridden uh, obstacle courses where every single thing is trying to take your mirrors off. You want one, don't you? It's the perfect small truck, but precious in its scarcity. The only way to enjoy the American Hilux is to own two of them. The clean one you keep under a cover in a garage and the dirty dented one you use. Further driving up prices.